Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. When I took my first statistics classes, I was quite confused by the sheer number of statistical tests and methods that I was supposed to memorize. And it was much later that I found out that parametric tests are special cases of the generalized linear model. So understanding how different parametric methods are linked or related, I found that very useful to get a better understanding of these tests and to see that they are not fundamentally different. So today specifically we look at the t-test for independent samples, a regression analysis, a simple linear model, and a correlation analysis, a Pearson correlation. And we apply them to exactly the same data and see how the results compare. So this is the research question that I have. Um, the context is cycling and I want to know if there's a difference in performance between cyclists who are all serious about their training and cyclists who are serious about their training while having plenty of fun. So this is Peter Sagan, one of my favorite writers, and his motto is, why so serious? Um, the data, and that shows you how serious I am about the study, is made up so we can focus on the methodology. And as I said, we want to compare the t-test for independent samples, a regression model, and a Pearson correlation and see how they can how they compare. Right, um, so this is the data I'm using. We have a group variable and the two groups are serious and why so serious. I also have a numeric encoding for the correlation that we'll do later on. Then the why so serious group is encoded one and the serious group is encoded zero. And then we just have a score. The range of values is supposed to be between zero and 100, just a score for performance of the cyclists. I'm showing the R code on the right hand side. Those who are not into R programming can just safely ignore the code and focus on the statistical aspects. And those who are into R programming can also find the code for this presentation on my GitHub profile. The link is in the description. So before we do the t-test, let's look at some descriptives of this data set. So the average score for the series group is 46 points and the average score for the YSO series group is 52.5 points. So the YSO series group seems to be more successful in their performance. We also see the highest and lowest values in each group. And fortunately, the standard deviations are almost the same. So the, um, that's a good sign. And the ends are the same in the two groups, 30 cyclists in each group. Right, um, let's just look at a quick visualization. The box plots indicate also that um, the YSO series group is more successful in their performance than the series group. Um, the asterisk denotes the mean value that I added to the median in the box plot. So we see mean and median are the same. And also the distribution of the individual data points um, Let's just assume that the data are fairly normally distributed. This is the R code, so those who are into R programming may want to stop the video here. Right, so finally onto the t-test. Um, we already saw the average values before. It's rounded here, so 46 for the series group and 52 for the YSO series group. And according to the t-test, this group difference is statistically significant. So we can conclude that the YSO series group performs better, and this difference is statistically significant according to this test. And the p-value is 0.002, so it's well below the common threshold of 0.05, and we'll keep this value in mind, 0.002. And let's see how this t-test compares to a simple linear regression model. So the output looks a little bit different. It looks like a different method. Um, we see that the group difference is significant, indicated by the two asterisks or stars here. Um, the exact p-value is not displayed in this format from this function I'm using. So I displayed it here again at the bottom, and we see it's exactly the same p-value that we also got for the t-test, 0.002. And this is not by chance. The methods are not fundamentally different. They display results a bit differently, but we get to the same conclusion. We can also find the average value or the mean value of the series group in the intercept. So that's the mean value for the group encoded zero on the group variable, 46 points. And then we have 
the coefficient for the YSO series group, and we can interpret this in terms of the dependent variable scores. So the mean value for the YSO series group is um, by about 6.5 points higher um, than for the series group, and that leads us to exactly the same mean value that we saw before, 52.2 points for the YSO series group. So again, the regression model or linear model confirms what we found out with the t-test. We get the same results, even if the display is a little bit different. Of course, the regression model aims at a different interpretation. So here we also get an r-squared value, which we don't see in the t-test. So here we can conclude that if we know the training method, um, whether cyclists had more fun during their training or were just all serious about their training, um, if we just know that training method, we can explain about 16% of the variability in cyclists' performances. Right, and lastly, let's see how the correlation, Pearson correlation, compares. Um, and again, we find exactly the same p-value, 0.002. You might wonder if a correlation is suitable for this kind of data. We may be used to interpret correlations in terms of the more a, the more b. So here we have this correlation coefficient called estimate. Um, that is kept in a range between minus 1 and plus 1. So minus 1 uh, relates to a perfectly negative association and plus 1 to a perfectly positive association. We have a positive coefficient here. So we could say um, the group that has more fun during training performs better. We may be tempted to say the more fun they have, the better they perform. But this wording doesn't make too much sense with only two groups present, 0 and 1. But if it's allowed to use dummy variables in regression models, it's also poss possible in correlations, even if it's not so common and we rather like to have more fine-grained continuous variables rather than a simple group variable. But um, technically it is possible and we get exactly the same p-value. So we see that the Pearson correlation is also not fundamentally different from the t-test and the linear model, the regression model. Well, that was about it for today. I hope you found that useful. All the best for your own data analyses. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.